Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to be back with our VGC Series 8 content. It's been a hot minute since we did content on the channel. So apologies about the lack of content that we've had. Hopefully now we're going to get into a better routine going forward. Now today I'm going to feature, because we just had the Players' Cup 4 qualifiers over the past weekend, I'm going to feature the team that I played in my qualifiers over the weekend. Now I didn't finish as well as I would have like to i don't know if i'm going to qualify if i'm totally honest uh but we'll have to just wait and see for the results but if you did play let me know down in the comment section below how you got on what score you ended up with i'd love to hear as always how you all got on in this tournament now here's today's team uh coined the name tickle primarily because we've got tickle whimsical um to play around with and primarily i really wanted a safeguard user on the team and a priority Kind of pranks the safeguard user and whimsical falls into that perfectly especially with the tailwind support as well and i really felt with the kind of surge in sun and colossal and other things in the format at the minute the kyogre would be a good shout and for the most part it was really good and um, the team i really like and i think there's some nice kind of text in here as well so we'll feature it today as always there is a poker page down in the description below if you want to take a look at the details the build of the team and uh, etc and uh, as always we'll throw a rental code up at the end of the episode so without further ado friends hope you enjoyed today's episode it's nice to be back and we'll jump into our first episode of the first game of the episode first up today we have a little bit of a mirror we have uh, Kyogre, Tornadus, Rillaboom, Metagross, Raichu and Tapu Fini so uh, like I say we've got a little bit of a mirror with the Kyogre wars going on here with the rain uh, outside of that you've got Tailwind support obviously from that Tornadus potentially brutal swing there that would pair up nicely with a weakness policy metagross uh, the big kind of danger on the team for us is obviously going to be the rillaboom if we can remove the rillaboom uh is as quickly as possible then that makes life a lot easier for us now we do have some ways to deal with it. of course we have uh, probably the best way to deal with it is our thunderous incarnate helps us out against uh tornadoes and the kyogre as well with the assault vest there and we also have Wimmy that we can kind of bring to utilize uh tailwind to kind of just keep pace with everything else on my opponent's side of the field um i think what we've got to worry about is obviously the raichu because we're not going to be able to use our airstream support as long as the raichu is kind of present um so we're going to need some other way to kind of mitigate the risk of the team i think we have to bring kyogre in this one it definitely does help us do we want maybe rotom because it can't oh, maybe p2 maybe Rotom but then Landorus as well can perform really well against the majority of things on this team it gives us a little bit of stability against um Rillaboom again but I think just the switch into the grassy terrain uh grassy glides and things like that from the Rillaboom probably going to be better and it gives us a little bit of a, a buffer against potentially flying threats as well from things like Tornadus electric type of threats from the the right you just got to be careful around things like the the Kyogre obviously and the Tapu Fini as well that can cause us a few problems in the Rotom department so we'll see how we get on here today um it's going to be interesting to see if we can get the kind of tickle combination going uh, it is very powerful if you can kind of start stacking those up uh, we do see the the classic lead Kyogre and Tornadus now the big problem in this kind of scenario is you're gonna see if you see the Kyogre max it's obviously gonna be hitting a lot harder but I mean you can kind of get around this by just going for the Tailwind keep pace with their Tailwind which is you predominantly think they're gonna go for um and also with the max airstream as well you're going to get that speed boost going into the following turn so just guaranteeing that you're going to be faster than the Kyogre to allow you because you, uh, to get the tickle and then the airstream off again because I think the one thing now is you know you, you be going for the light the max lightning uh the following turn obviously to make more sense or even go for it here but you've got to be wary about the right you switching in like any one point which could be super detrimental to us now we are going to see my opponent max is it gonna be the uh the tornadoes maybe it would make sense if it was because of how the dynamax turns are kind of panning out no nope, it's just gonna be the kyogre i never get my head around how they they're what i always presumed it's always the fastest pokemon with dynamax first um but then it kind of makes me think is this scarf kyogre then predominantly i don't know could potentially be but we'll soon find out if it's scarf kyogre it means it hasn't really got a way to to max guard so gives us a little more flexibility i guess 
when we're playing up against it, especially when it's not max. But I'm hoping we can remove it before um, before it reverts back to its normal form anyway. So I'm guessing we're just going to see Tailwind, Tailwind. Oh, no, we're going to see the uh, the Tornadus, not Tailwind, I don't think. This is very slow, Tornadus. No, we could have went for the Max Lightning here, but it's always good to kind of just make sure, get at speed control in check before we do anything else, you know? Because um, you can bet your bottom dollar. You can bet anything. The next turn, the Tornadus will switch out to the Raichu to protect from a, a Max Lightning. So we're going to see a Geyser into um, Thunderous here. Now, the confusion really doesn't help us out a bunch. Okay. Max Hailstorm. You're probably better going for the Geyser there, you know, boosted by the rain. Um, the Max Hail, I'm not too worried about. The confusion, like I said, does complicate things here because really we want the tickle and then we want to be able to hit the Kyogre for, for big, big damage. But um, because we're confused, it makes things a little bit more tricky um and we do have a switch into potentially rotom here um that would be the one i would probably go for if anything I don't want to bring the rain back onto the field because it'll just boost the kyogre's what type attack now do i now nah, i don't think i risk i don't think i can risk going for a, um a max lightning not with the raichu threat in the back yeah, and you, you can see here, if we click my, the lightning, we would have been done for. So, we've just got to hope that the tickle kind of pays off, that we don't hit ourselves in confusion. Which we don't, which is ideal. And then the other good thing about tickle as well, it's great against things like Zacian as well. It can come in and you can lodge defense as well as kind of keep that attack uh, boost that it gets in check. Um, you can see now the Kyogre's like on its last legs almost. So... Uh, with the Raichu coming in. We know pretty much once the Kyogre goes down, my opponent's going to find it hard to deal with the Rotom Heat. So I think like out of everything that we've got, uh, Togger and the Whimsicott, which is interesting. Probably thinking that they've got, they've got a free turn here, you know, um, with the the, uh, the Thunderous. But the fact is that we're kind of sitting in a, in a really nice spot. They've got active fake out going into this next turn. Uh, we've got our Tailwind up as well. So, I mean, they've got a really... We could bring in Kyogre here, you know? Um, just to make use of these last few turns of Tailwind. And then if the Rillaboom does decide to, to rear its head onto the field, um, at least we've got a nice switch into Rotom Heat in the back. And I think that's the big thing that you kind of need to think of because I'd imagine the last Pokemon that my opponent's got is probably the Rillaboom. Uh, we do have Fake Out as a threat here, for sure, um, with the Raichu out in the field. And you would imagine it'll probably go into the Kyogre. But on the off chance that it doesn't, it's probably going to drop to a Water Spout here. And we know that we're going to be able to get rid of the uh, the Kyogre now with another Airstream. So just making use of the Thunderous. I think it's a, it's a hard Pokemon to kind of deal with i think you kind of need another mode like in your team rather than approaching the thunderous uh with just your kyogre i think the kyogre is obviously a way better pokemon to bring in like late game in this sort of matchup if you are kind of planning on on uh, coming against it you need something like the right you really does limit what you can do but you need to have a partner next to the right you that can kind of help out with that a little bit more uh, the Raichu decided not to go for the fake out here to its own detriment, I think. Um, not realizing that, you know, that we're going to be able to get another speed boost with the Airstream here. Put the Kyogre out of reach of the uh, the Raichu, especially with the Tailwind kind of backing us. Um, and get the Water Spout, single target, no way. Even with an Assault Vest, this thing's surviving. So uh, the Hail Damage really kind of helping us out a bunch. Just giving that little bit of additional chip when the Raichu hit the field to um to close this one up for us and uh we've got the tornadoes and i would guess the rillaboom yeah it is the rillaboom so which is fine um i mean rotom rotom is still a really good pokemon to come in here to be honest um we've got to contend with with tailwind of course but the, the, our priority is obviously going to be get rid of the rillaboom and then kyogre can kind of just win out easy enough so uh, we will go for a fly into a Rillaboom and we'll bring Rotom in. The nice thing about this Kyogre in particular, it can take a Grassy Glide from full health. It'll, it'll survive on like about 12, 12 to 7 HP. 
to be specific, I'm just throwing up numbers that I know from a weekend where I've been like, I know we can take uh, a grassy terrain, grassy glide from a Rillaboom. If they got live four, but obviously it, it, it knocks you out. I mean, just that additional boost, it's too much. Wow. Yeah, is that, uh, that is, it's so strong. So strong, boom. Could be banded, you know, that does so much damage. Hurricane coming in and uh, doubling up into the Rotom there. Wow, Rotom taking an absolute beating here. Critical hit. Okay, well, we do get a Citrus Berry. Um, and you got to hope that a Fly is going to be enough to get uh, the Rillaboom. Our Tailwind does pit her out just now. Mm. I think we just Thunderbolt. I think we just Thunderbolt here. I think, you, well, you'd probably go Grassy Glide into the, the Rotom and then Hurricane into Thunderous, but we should take a, a Hurricane from the Opposing Thunderous. Ooh, they're going after the... Th huh, that's kind of weird why they went that way. Unless they're just thinking we're going to protect, potentially. Hurricane into Rotom again. Do we take it? Just about. Nice. Ah, oh, but there's a the confusion. Come on, Rotom. Hit through it. Come on. You know you want to do it. So all these end games are really difficult. We do get the Thunderbolt. It's not going to pick up the knockout, but then again, oh, it does. Okay. Rotom's like, Rotom's just angry. He's like, nah, I'm doing it. <laughs> How dare you confuse me? And now we've kind of got this match locked up, really. So we just need one more fly and then we're kind of done. So we can probably fly and then just go over here. We've got Kyogre sitting in the back. And we've done enough at this point as well to think we probably can stall out the grassy terrain if we need to. Um... If my opponent, like if we bring Kyogre into the field, because there's only like a couple of turns left, so you can bring Kyogre in this next turn, protect, the grassy terrain's gone. Most times, nine times out of ten, Kyogre's going to outspeed Rillaboom and get that Ice Beam off, and we've done enough chip damage to uh, kind of close this one up. So we're all right, but we could prove a point where we could say, is this Kyogre going to take? I don't know, this Rillaboom feels like it's banded, so I don't think we're going to take a grassy glide. Let's just protect. Could say we could prove a point here, but I think well, I'll be disproved at this point with uh, the Rillaboom. It hasn't really changed move since the Grassy Glide was locked in. I don't really get the Grassy Glide into the Thunderous slot, though. I mean, it would just make sense. Even if you thought the Rotom was going to protect, just go for that there, you know. So, anyway, good game to my opponent. We do pick up a win to kick us off today. Once it got doing some work, but it's all about the Thunderous, really, in this first one. Um, and just showing you how it can function even in really difficult situations. Um, hopefully, I'd like to face a Zassian team. That would be nice because I think if we could face a Zassian team or um, even a Sun team, you know, it would be nice to see the utility of Safeguard and the Tickle as well in, in kind of conjunction. So we'll hop into our next game now, friends. Okay, next up today, we have a Tokol Whimsicott in Didi, Urshifu, Reggie, Aleki, and Calyrex Shadow Rider. One of my favorites. New restricted Pokemon, not one that I'm uh, keen to go up against most of the time, but uh, very good Pokemon. Dangerous, obviously, with the combination with the Ndidi there, you've got the instant kind of redirection to support the Psychic Terrain as well, which helps boost Expanding Force, makes it double target attack. You've got Astro Barrage, uh, Mudshot as well, potentially there. All things that make it difficult to deal with because it hits just so ridiculously hard, especially when you're kind of pairing it up with help and hand support that you commonly see on Ndidi. Kind of common trends in the team as well. You're seeing the Whimsicott, which is a speed control uh, source, not only for the Calyrex, but the rest of the team. But you kind of predominantly see that as a late game kind of Pokemon come in. Um, so I think we are going to need a Trick Room mod in this one and a Kyogre. So I think Kyogre, Porygon 2 in the back. And I think potentially Thunderous Wimmy up top. I think it's pretty straightforward for us, you know. I think the thing with Porygon 2 is it gives us a nice way to um, switch into the Calyrex if we're worried about Astro Barrage and stuff like that. The Thunderous up top we can Tailwind, change the terrain if we want, stop those expanding force boosted attacks from the, um, from the Calyrex if we do see it as a lead. Um, and we also have the option to go Max Darkness if we don't see it with Ndidi, but, uh, well, we don't. Arr, I wonder what we're going to see from Whimsicott here, then. That'll be interesting. Um, ba -ba -ba -boom. Are they going to go Tailwind Turn 1? I don't really understand this lead too much unless, they, they, unless they've got, like, a Jack Button Whimmy, which would make sense. Um, 
and then in that case i don't really want to get kind of caught up with the eject button you know um one option we could potentially go for is Hmm, we could just max lightning into the DD and throw up our tailwind. Oh, we'd be better. We, we, we would be better. We would be better going max airstream. I just worry so much about the, uh, the eject button here from the whimsicott. It's really, really kind of worrying me a lot and I don't really want to lose. Let's bring in P2. And let's just go for a Moonblast into the Whimsicott. Let's just see what it's going to do. I feel like Thunderous is too important for us at this point to just allow it to kind of potentially be eject buttoned out and lose its Assault Vest because it loses so much ability against something like Shadow Rider Calyrex. We need it for something like Urshifu as well. Um, so we'll see what my opponent's going for. But uh, they've got a very slow Whimmy. They're going expand force. I think they're going trick room, you know. Hit hitting us hard. Okay, go for the trick room. There we go. Well, we'll take it. I'll take it all day long. Um, what did we get boost wise with P two special attack boost? That's what we like to see, isn't it? Um, we could just go ice beam, and um, we're gonna let Wimmy go down at this point. I don't. It's a bit frustrating because, like, Kyogre could come in and start doing a lot of work. Because if you look at the concept, like, the build of my opponent's team, they don't really have... I mean, they've got the Torkoal, so you're probably better off kind of holding off until the Torkoal makes it, pops its pops its head up onto the field. Because once it does, then we can bring the Kyogre. I mean, we just got to be a bit patient, I think. Um, we're going to just take expanded forces for our troubles. Wimmy doesn't take it, but it does then allow us to get Kyogre on the field, I guess, because we'll be able to remove the Whimsicott. You've got to imagine if they're going, if they're going down, uh... yeah, because we can, ma we can max, we can max and just get the rain back up. It's not really an issue for us. Like Kyogre's like chunky enough to do this. If they've got the Torkoal, which you would imagine they have. Yeah, there he is. There he is. But because of the Trick Room, uh, we're going to be able to get our rain up um, after. So we're in a phenomenal spot. Phenomenal spot. The coined <laughs> term on this channel. Um, so yeah, they're kind of in a, in, a, in a real pinch where they have to switch the Torkoal out now or max it. Um, and that that's not going to really help them out too much. Uh, I think we'll recover with P2. We're not sitting in the, the healthiest of positions. I think we probably are all right just to max Kyogre here, you know, and go into Torkoal and catch whatever comes in on the on the switch. Because if they want, if they don't want to max Torkoal. Okay. Yeah, they put themselves into an awkward position there. I don't really think with a team like that, the Trick Room is the best route to kind of go down. I think, you know, you've got the Torkoal in there. To kind of be a, an anti-trick room Pokemon rather than be something that that is predominantly going to be your powerhouse trick room Pokemon. I mean, it can work, but I think in those situations, it just it just yeah. Anyway, we're going to get another battle out of today's episode, so hopefully we'll we'll jump into our next one, and uh, hopefully that one's a bit better to kind of showcase this team to you all. Okay, up next we're against Fire, playing a team of Shadow Rider Calyrex, Ferret Thorn, Indeedy Female, Landorus Therian, Thunderous Incarnate, and Whimsicott. So, lots going on here. Um, one big thing I would say about this team is kind of you normally see an inclusion between the Thunderous, the Shadow Rider Calyrex, and Didi. You'd normally see something like Urshifu, which is, is missing here. Um, but it doesn't detract from the the uh, the threat that this team can kind of pose to us. I think the one big thing, other than the Calyrex, that's a big issue for us is definitely the Ferrothorn. We need to keep in mind that the Ferrothorn is a definitely a late game Pokemon for my opponent. So for that reason alone, I like I really want to bring Rotom just to make sure that I've got a way to to deal with it. The only thing that really threatens Rotom is uh, uh, you know the the Landorus. Therian with its rock slides, max max rock falls and things like that. And then the Calyrex that can hit us like for ridiculously hor horrible damage. So I think what we're going to do is, hmm, I do want P2 in this game as well, I think. Hmm, or do I? P2 would probably be quite useful. I think we've got Thunderous Wimmy again. Rotom for sure. We need speed control. 
uh, which we got Tailwind, but I mean, maybe I think P2 is probably the best one for us here, to be honest. Yeah, 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 yep, 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 yep. Yeah. I think indeed it could be a little bit tricky to deal with, but if you if you see it with the Calyrex lead up top, then you know we've got a clear kind of direction to go with the Thunderous, where we can just Tailwind, Max Airstream, then the next turn we can go after the Ndidi or go after the Calyrex if that's what we see. We may not see that though. Thunderous Wimmy for my opponent, so snap, here we go. Let's see who's who's comes out on top. I'd still worry about the eject. I worry about eject button Wimmy every single time I face it. It's uh, it's just one of those things that just scares, terrifies me, terrifies me. Um, and you know, in these situations, if you fall behind a little bit, it tends not to work out super well for you. Um, and what we could do is double up into the Whimsicott, for sure, but... I really don't want to fall into the... Um... Oh, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. I know we'll get bit for it. I know we'll get bit for it, but we'll go for it. Tailwind, Airstream, into the Whimmy. Try... Oh, no eject button. This makes me very happy. This makes me very happy. I like seeing this, because they're going to probably max their Thunderous as well. They're going to go into Whimsicott. But we do have the Cobra, and we'll be able to take it, even if they're life orbed, because Wimmy, this Wimmy is just disgustingly like strong defensively. It's great. It obviously gets knocked out still by things like plus one Behemoth Blade and, and those silly attacks and big fire type attacks, but in the sun. But just your general kind of big physical attacks it takes like a champ. So, yeah. Both Thunderous is maxing. It's going to be the Battle of the Airstreams. It's interesting that they're keeping Wimmy in the back because I think the the what they're keeping in mind is they probably got Calyrex Whimsicott in the back. You've got to think at this point. So get the Tailwind up and then go go from there. In that end game for my opponent, anyway. Well, we'll get the tailwind up so we can just guarantee that we are the fastest thing on the field, and uh, we've got a little bit of room to kind of play with as well. Um, yeah, and the indeed will drop the next turn. We've got to be very careful though about going for like max darkness or anything like that against this opposing thunderous, because the problem is we don't want to proc the defined boost on on my opponent's thunderous. Uh, we we really need to be very mindful of that. Now this turn, like, we've got a couple of options. We could go for a safeguard, but is there any, are we gonna get any? I don't know if we're gonna get much out of a safeguard here, you know? Um, there's not really much status on my opponent's team, so it, it doesn't really worry me too much. So I think if what we could potentially do is go Max Knuckle. We're gonna be able to, yeah, we got Max Knuckle and then Moonblast into Ndidi just to make sure that we do get it. Um, the problem is there, though, if we go Max Knuckle Moonblast into my opponent's uh, Indeedee, then it gets very difficult if we if we do proc the Defiant boost as well. Just be, it would be nice to have. I mean, what we could do is just go, yeah, we'll go Max Knuckle. It should be enough. It's neutral, right? It depends how, how bulky this Indeedee is. It'd be nice to get the, the, the attack boost at this, at this stage. And like I say, with the Tailwind already in um, in effect, we've got a little bit of wriggle room uh, to kind of skip around a potential airstream from my opponent here. So just sets us up a little bit better for the late game. Um, but I think we're going to have to try and get another airstream. And it preserves Whimsicott as well, you know, for us. Late game, which is always good. But we need to be careful with our Rotom. Like, that's a big thing. Like, Rotom needs to be preserved because we've already outlined in Team Preview how important it would be for Ferrothorn. But it's unlikely at this point that my opponent's got the Ferrothorn, you know. They're going to have Calyrex in the back. We've seen three of the four Pokemon that my opponent's got. I think we got Airstream this turn. And I think we go for a nasty plot. And then we've got one more turn of Tailwind to take advantage of with our Airstream. So whatever comes it's probably going to be the, Rot uh, the, the Whimsicott that comes in. Sets the Tailwind up. For uh, my opponent, but we can probably at that point double down into the the Thunderous uh, with Rotom and our own Thunderous, and probably remove it from the field, and that would only leave Wimmy Calyrex, which isn't ideal, but it's not the end of the world because we do have uh, Tailwind of our own that we can uh, we can utilize with our own Whimsicott. Just making sure that we kind of 
take care of um, Thunderous if we can, if we can, if we're in good enough help, help, help. So we are going to see helping hand come out from the Ndidi. One last ditch helping hand. Where are you going to go? Are you going to go Max Knuckle after the Rotom? Or are you going to go Max Lightning after the uh, Thunderous on our end? I don't know if you'd be too concerned really at this point with the Rotom. So you may leave the Rotom alone and kind of concentrate down a little bit more on, on our Thunderous. Another Airstream keeping pace at least is into uh, Rotom. That'll just proc our Citrus Berry. The thing, yeah, I think the thing is we probably do lose Rotom the next turn. I'd imagine. Because... We are going to see uh, the Tailwind go up from my opponent. And uh, because of the airstreams from my opponent's Thunderous, they're kind of going to be doubling up their speed the next turn, which will make Rotom well, kind of just surpassed a little bit. Which, I, but I mean, they have to go for something like Superpower. If, they, if they're going to pick up the Knockout, they can't go for something like Fly. Um, we can go for a Fly this turn into the Whimsicott, and I think it's not a bad option uh, with our Thunderous. It's just whether or not that Wimmy's sashed on my opponent's end. So it's either like, if you look at the concept, like the build of my opponent's team, like where's the focus sash? It's either on the Whimsicott or it's either on the Calyrex, you know? And I would bet it's probably on the Whimsicott, you know? So we'll go fly and we will go... I think we got... Hmm... I think we got overheat into Thunderous. Just get some damage onto it, to be honest. There's a Tailwind. What are we going to see? Superpower or Wild Charge? Superpower into Rotom, which is fine. We drop those defenses. That is... Oh, and we take it. We take it. No attack boost from the opposing Thunderous uh, means that uh, Rotom is going to be able to take this pretty... Well, get the overheat off. Plus two. So, see how much damage we do. Salt Vest, I'd assume. Whew. Very close, very close. Uh, and our Tailwind Pit is out, but at this point, we just need to try and get a Thunderbolt onto the Wimmy, and uh, we're sitting in a really good position. Um, because, I, like I say, I kind of predict the Sash to be there. But I don't... Uh, you, if you're Thunderous, you have to go Wild Charge into the Rotom here and remove it from the field. You have to. You have to. And uh, the Tailwind kind of... Been a little bit detrimental to my opponent here because now they're not able to hit the Thunderous on our end. And um, yeah, they're gonna. Okay, bring in Calyrex. Okay, so Rotom not that important to us now. I mean, it's important always, but it's not super important to us. We'll probably lose Rotom to a Moonblast here, I would imagine. Moonblast. Hi. Okay, well, that's all right. We get the fly. We're going to see where the sash is now. So at least we'll be able to determine where this sash lies. It's on the Calyrex. It is on the Calyrex. Okay, well. Do we go Tailwind or do we go... If we go Tailwind, you see, we've got the the, uh, the ability to go for uh, a foul play into the Calyrex. Take it down to its sash. Or we could have, well, you know what? I think what we do, I think we Tailwind Wild Charge into the Thunderous. Because if we look at our stats, yeah, we're plus two. So yeah, I think we do this. Tailwind into the Thunderous. We know that it's probably not likely to have Protect here. We'll take an attack from the Calyrex. It's going to get the, uh, the boost. But Thunderous should survive this. It means we're going to be able to get a foul play off the next turn. Uh, take it down to a Sash. And P2 will be able to kind of pick up the um, pick up the pieces to kind of close this one up. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Because we could, we could Trick Room as well with P2. But I don't think we necessarily need to. I think we can just uh, double up into Calyrex with a, a foul play. It's not Sashed, actually. So I was wrong. It's Life Orb. So it's all right. Thunder is going to be able to close this one out for us. We've got a little bit of support here with the uh, the P2 coming in. Kind of just making sure that whatever happens, we'll be able to close this one out. Because we are running Shadow Ball on our P2. Uh, primarily for this specific matchup, really. Um, but we are going to be able to close this one up. 
And uh, funny enough, we haven't even brought the Kyogre to this one. Uh, it's been a little bit of the thunderous shot today, but I mean, we have seen the Whimsicott perform pretty well. We got the tickle off in that first game against the Kyogre. Um, but thunderous, I think that's the one thing, you know, the safeguard is great. Uh, honestly, like it came in so many times, uh, so useful. There's so many things carrying Will-O-Wisp now. There's so many things um, carrying Yawn, carrying Burn Jealousy to try and catch thunderous off because the thing is with Burn and Jealousy, most of the time you're boosting your own stats and your partner's stats most of the time um so it's a it's a really great pokemon to hit with burning jealousy in those situations anyway good game to my opponent and um yeah hope you've enjoyed today's episode we'll jump over now and get you guys the rental code for today's team here is today's team friends i hope if you try it out you have a lot of fun with it there's obviously a lot going on with the team it kind of covers a lot of things as well very well in my opinion anyway and the kyoga as i've said before there are some like key calcs that it can survive it's very defensively built but it's still got the power with the mystic water especially in the rain to do a lot of damage and just cut through teams when you need it to the Whimsicott is obviously the big star of the show, the coin the name Tickle, with the Tickle and the Safeguard supporting things like Landorus Therian, the Thunderous, the Safeguard supports everything. And um, it's just a really nice tech to bring as well as a Tailwind. You got the Trick Room switch as well for the P2 that works predominantly with most things on the team, excluding probably the Thunderous. But in certain situations, it can work there as well. If you do try the team out though, please let me know down in the comment section uh, how you got on with it, if you enjoy it. And I hope at the base of it, you've enjoyed today's episode. It's nice being back again after a little break and uh, looking forward to continuing on with the rest of the week. If you've got any suggestions for teams that you'd like to see going forward, let me know as always. I'm going to wrap things up there. So, Take care of yourselves and I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.